Today, we'll talk about the bombshell claims of inside information that have been igniting a pitiful F1 war. The 2022 season has been plagued by porpoising. Porpoising is the technical term used to describe the cars bouncing. Now, the Red Bull boss is claiming Mercedes got inside information to fix this problem. We'll be digging deep into this, so make sure you stay till the end of this video to find out all about it. Firstly, is inside Inside information igniting a pitiful F1 war. No one team has faced so many issues with porpoising this season than Mercedes. Their 2022 car has been bouncing violently at super high speeds. This bouncing issue is highlighted even more on straights. So much so that Lewis was having trouble getting out of his car due to back pain after one of the races. Then Mercedes made some improvements in Montreal that solved the issue to an extent. But being being Mercedes' eight-time world champion, you're bound to have people claiming you've been cheating. One such person accusing Mercedes of cheating is Christian Horner, Red Bull's team leader. He has publicly claimed that his longtime rival has been getting inside information from the FIA. He doesn't think it's fair that Mercedes was the one facing the problem, but Red Bull will also have to make changes eventually. He believes that the FIA is taking steps to fix the bouncing issue just because of Mercedes. This statement by Horner has added fuel to the fire. This porpoising war has been now intensified by his claims. Clashes between team bosses also took place at the Canadian Grand Prix. So now, let's see if Mercedes got the information they've been accused of getting. But did Mercedes get inside information to solve the problem? Mercedes solved the bulk of its porpoising issues. They did this by adding a second floor to the car, something that stiffened the car's floor and limited the bouncing as well. This measure by Mercedes, though, did not go unnoticed by the bosses of other teams, who are now locked in an ugly battle with Mercedes's Toto Wolf. But what Mercedes did was fully legal. A technical directive, or TD, from the FIA allowed them to use a second floor shortly before practice on Friday in Montreal. Mercedes is the only one who used the second floor during practice. But according to Christian Horner, the time between the TD and the practice was too short. He implied that Mercedes couldn't have possibly come up with the second floor in that short time frame. The only way they were able to do this was because they were having inside information fed to them. Talking to the news, Horner said that it has to be discussed in a technical forum, and that is overtly biased to sorting one team's problems out. The only team who turned up here with it, even in advance of the technical directive. So work that one out. This just goes to show how pissed Horner has been with Mercedes and how he's implying they've been cheating. As of right now, there's no clear indication whether Mercedes got inside information or not. How they fixed the problem was pretty fast, no doubt about that. But still, there's no clear indication they cheated. If that does happen to be the case, though, then stay tuned. But this is not just an issue between Wolf and Horner. Other team's bosses have also joined the war. So do other team bosses also have problems with Mercedes? Long story short, yes. As mentioned earlier in this video, once you've stayed at the top for so long, you're bound to make some enemies. Other teams' bosses have also pushed back against the attempts to regulate this problem. They claim that making rule changes in the middle of the season will cause safety issues. The underlying problem here, porpoising, is also causing safety issues. So whatever actions were taken by the FIA weren't easy to take. Toto Wolf was seen throwing a fit during a team meeting. According to sources, he lost his shh and he went on a lengthy rant claiming that other teams had started ganging up on Mercedes. He even went on to call the comments of other team bosses pitiful. The problem is that Mercedes could have fixed porpoising by just increasing their ride height, but they chose not to do that because that would undermine their performance. Otmar Safnauer, Alpine's boss, even claimed that Mercedes could just raise the height of their cars, but instead of doing this, they're just lobbying the FIA to make changes that they desire. But despite all that, Wolf has argued that this problem has clearly gone too far, especially because his star driver, Lewis Hamilton, injured his back in Baku. So yeah, porpoising has terrible consequences, which is why Mercedes has been fighting it. Let's see firsthand what porpoising can do. And finally, is porpoising really that bad? Yes, it's quite bad. This issue mostly affected Hamilton because of his car's height and his age, but this would eventually start affecting other racers as well. Porpoising has been causing a lot of discomfort to Hamilton. Hamilton. 
Hamilton. So much so that after the Baku GP, Hamilton was in so much pain that he was having trouble getting out of the car. However, if Mercedes increased the ride height of their vehicle, then that would mean that their car isn't competitive on the track anymore and will let other cars pass through on the straights. This problem of Hamilton not even being able to get out of his car could have dire consequences. For example, if he was ever involved in a crash, his not being able to get out of the car would become a fire hazard. All right, so that's that for the porpoising issue. There's so much always happening in Formula One that it can be hard to catch up. But don't worry, we've got you covered. Now we'll talk about some other news coming to you straight from the world of F1. Firstly, Mercedes's second floor is not the only controversy surrounding FIA's TDs. First, we had a porpoising problem. Now we have the DRS debate. DRS stands for Drag Reduction System. Formula One drivers use this technology to overtake other racers on the track. So what happened was that F1 decided to overhaul all of its technical regulations for the 2022 season. The cars need to now generate a lot more of their downforce from the road. This is so they don't have to rely on undisturbed air flowing over their spoilers or wings. So because of these regulations, cars are now able to follow each other much closer in tight corners. Although this has not resulted in more overtaking, but FIA believes that DRS is now redundant in the sport. But wait, they have an extremely vocal critic on this issue, the current world champion Max Verstappen. Verstappen believes that DRS is still necessary for Formula One. He stated that without the system, races would be more processional than action-packed. So despite the new generation of cars, DRS is still needed according to him. Red Bull had a DRS issue in Spain, which got frustrating for Verstappen. He also stated that he was stuck behind a much slower Mercedes just because his flaps refused to work. So banning the system would make these races boring. The system was also a key factor in the Montreal Grand Prix, when Sainz kept using the system to try to overtake Max Verstappen. Without DRS, we wouldn't have seen that thrilling several lap chase. As of right now, engineers at Red Bull are confident that their DRS issue has been solved. Up next, Lewis Hamilton's fans flocked to his support after Piquet's racist comments. The 69-year-old ex-racer was seen making racist comments toward Lewis Hamilton. In an interview in November 2021, he called Lewis Hamilton the N-word in Portuguese. Hamilton claims it's not just his language that's been bothering him. It's also his archaic mindset. He says he's been a target of attacks like this all his life, and there's a lot to learn for these people. His fans and fellow F1 racers flocked to Instagram and Twitter to make statements in favor of Hamilton. Racers talked about how they've known Hamilton for a long time and found him to be extremely respectful of everyone. When Piquet said those words, he was talking about Hamilton's clash with Red Bull's Verstappen at Silverstone in 2021. The interesting thing? This video went viral just four days before 2022's Silverstone race this weekend. Lastly, Silverstone promises to keep up with Vegas and Miami. Vegas and Miami GPs were known for their festival-style vibe, vibrant parties, and tons of celebrities. Now Silverstone has promised to do the same. Firstly, it will include a music festival to keep fans on site. This is not just for entertainment, but it will also reduce travel, which will help them achieve sustainability goals. Secondly, they've promised to ensure that celebrities are found at the event. As of right now, we're not sure how they'll make that happen, but we'll believe them. Let's hope it's as great as we expect it to be. Well, that's all we have for you guys today. Do y'all feel that Mercedes got inside information, or were their engineers just really competent and were prepared for anything? Let us know all your thoughts in the comment section below. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video. See you guys next time. Bye!